Welcome back. Uh, this is another exercise now dealing with hypergeometric probability distributions. Um, this has the potential to be an interesting problem. Uh, I guess if you like gaming, if you're a gambler, then maybe you'll enjoy this one. If you don't enjoy gambling or you're not interested, well, um, I guess you're not going to like this problem very much because the mathematics is long and tedious and uh, just so easy to make silly mistakes. So let's um, let's set this up um, from the beginning, okay? So the hypergeometric probability distribution, remember, this is just like a binomial distribution. So there's a success, there's a failure. We can define those however we like, okay? This is a defined as a success, this is a failure. A, prob a, a binomial distribution, uh, the events were entirely independent. So if in you know the first trial, I receive a success that has no impact at all on the probability of a success in the second trial or second uh, period. So the events were entirely independent. With the hypergeometric uh, distribution, now that dependency or the independency is gone and there is now a dependency between trials. So a success in the first trial will have an impact on the probability of success in the second trial. So here, you know, we're playing Jack Blackjack. It's a card game. So each time I draw a card from the deck, that card doesn't go back in the deck. I draw a card, it is gone. So the probability of, you know, drawing a next card as being a 10 or an ace or something, that probability is, is changed by the fact that I've taken something out of that deck of cards. So this is really what's happening in this, this Blackjack problem. So here we have it's a common game at home and casinos. So the way the game works, you have a deck of cards, 52 cards in the deck. Each player is dealt only two cards. So here we have already uh, some parts of our problem. We have our population. So we have a population that consists of 52 cards. Each player is drawn uh, is dealt two cards. So there's our sample. So we have a sample n equals just two cards from that deck. So uh, we have face cards, jack queens and kings and tens are all worth 10 points, aces are 1 or 11. All other cards are scored at face value, so 1 through 9 are face value. The 52 card deck then contains 16 cards worth 10 and 4 aces. The best hand possible, called the blackjack, is 21 points, which would be one ace and one 10 point card. Okay, so let's um, let's start at the least <laughs> the least enjoyable part is dealing with the formula. So this is the probability of x successes. So uh, let's define our terms here. X is the number of successes, success in the sample. So this F of X gives us the probability of achieving X number of successes of a sample. And this is going to be R over X, where R is the is success or the number of success in the population, population, uh, and then this is the number of failures, so n minus r and little n minus x, n is population size, little n is the sample size, so the sample size minus the number of successes in the sample size uh, would equal the number of failures, right? So these terms here uh, are both failures in the population and failures in the sample. And then this is divided by uh, n and little n. Okay, so it looks a little bit um, simple in that notation, but of course that's all combinatorial notation using the factorial operator, so it's a little bit tedious. So. To do the calculations, but we'll get through that. So let's see. If we look at part A, what is the probability that both cards are aces or 10 point cards? Okay, so what this means, I'm actually going to change my drawing just a little bit. 
I'm going to divide the deck uh, here in on this side this is R this is n minus r so this side is our success this side these are our failures so in this case we are defining a success as being uh, aces or 10 point cards and i want to know the probability that both of my cards so that means that my entire sample so i have a sample of size n equals 2 that both of those cards fall into the success which means that both of my cards in my sample are deemed a success which means that x here x the number of successes in the sample both of those are going to be successes so r in this case well i'm looking at the number of successes are aces and tens so i have 16 tens and four aces so r is equal to 20 n minus r so this is 52 minus 20 so n minus r is 32 failures as we've defined it okay those numbers will change as we progress in my sample no failures so n this is getting small n minus x is equal to zero because i don't want any failures i want both of my cards to be defined as a success okay so let's get into our calculations here. So the probability of two successes. So now I have R is equal to 20. So within, within the population, there exists 20 cards that qualify as a success. In my sample, I want two of those cards to be, or both of those cards to be a success. N minus R, so the number of failures, 32 number of failures in my sample i will want any failures in my sample divided by my sample size 52 and sorry population size 52 sample size 2. so now let's rewrite this using the combinatorial notation so this is going to be 20 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 18 factorial this is going to be uh, 32 factorial divided by 0 factorial and 32 factorial divided by, I'm going to run out of room, 52, maybe I can scroll up a little bit here, 52 factorial over 2 and 50. Okay, so what is this going to be? Let's get our calculator. <clears throat> so let's calculate the first one 20 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 18 factorial so that's going to be 190 this next term in the numerator that's just equal to 1 that's 32 factorial over 32 factorial the 0 factorial is always 1 so that's 1 over 1 and our denominator this denominator is going to be the same for all of our exercises, so we can only we only need to calculate this one once. 52 divided by uh, 2 factorial times 50 factorial, 1326, And so our final answer for this probability is 190 divided by 1326 is 0.14. Let's keep it the four decimal places, so 1433. So there's, a, call it a 14.3% chance that my two cards will both be defined as a success, which in this case means my two cards will be uh, either aces, uh, tens, or ace and tens. So we're really looking at kind of the, the, the union of, of events. It's either tens, it's either aces, or it's either ace and ten. Okay, so those are all uh, our successes. The 14 and a third percent chance that our two cards that we draw are both deemed a success in this case. Okay, part B. What is the probability that both of the cards are aces? 
So only a few things change in our calculation here. I'm going to only erase what's going to change. So here, this let's let's start fresh here and here and here. This will change up here. Uh, let's see. Now our successes. Oops. Our successes is defined by just being an ace. And within that deck of cards, there's only four aces. So out of those 52 cards, a success means an ace, which in this case is only four. Our sample size hasn't changed. So down here where we have our n is equal to two, we're still just drawing two cards. And I'm still interested in only successes, both of those cards being deemed a success, or in this case, uh, an ace. Our failures now change at least on the population side, because this is now 52 minus four. So this is 48 possible failures within that deck of cards. Within our sample, again, I'm not interested in failures. I want both of my two cards to be defined as a success. So let's, uh, let's go through this calculation again. So I have now only four uh, four successes within the population. I want both of those cards in my sample to be defined as a success. My failures, I have 48 in the population and none in my sample. The denominator does not change uh, because that's dependent on the population size, which the deck of cards doesn't change size. And my sample, I'm only ever getting two cards, so the sample size doesn't change either. So let's fill this out in the combinatorial notation, two and two, and this is 48 factorial divided by zero and 48. And the denominator does not change. So, oops, let's get rid of that. So this actually is not going to take us too, too long to do because this piece here, this is equal to one. I think this is what we had last time, except there's the numbers were different, but the ratio uh, is the same. So this is still going to be one. So all we need to figure out is that first uh, first fraction. And so this is going to be, let's clear this away, four factorial divided by two factorial times two factorial. And this gives me six. And so here I have six divided by 1326. 1326. So this gives me a probability of 0 0.0045. 0 0.0045. So there's a probability that of those 52 cards, two cards that I draw, they're both going to be aces. Okay, so that gets us through half of this problem. I'm uh, coming up on 14 minutes on this video doing just these two problems. So I think I'm going to um, take a little break um, and I'll stop this video here. I'll start another video and we'll, uh, we'll finish up this problem uh, in uh, hopefully less than 10 minutes. Okay, thanks for watching. See you again soon.